Welcome back. All right, so news of the day video for all you fine people for your Friday, October 21st. I'm going to start with the item that's at the bottom of the board. We're going to start there. Uh, how could you not mention? So on nights where there's a lot of games, uh, there is stuff that will get missed. Um, when I when I review slash recap these games, and I used to call them reviews, I call them recaps now. It really doesn't matter. It's the same video. I always assume that people watching those reviews have likely already seen highlight packages and things of that nature and that the review is is just kind of to augment that or that they'll go and watch the the highlight reel packages after there are stuff i'm not going to see there's stuff i'm not necessarily going to know that took place in every game and especially last night there were 10 games going on at the same time as in at one point there were 10 games none of them in intermission and there was stuff going on all over the place so i'm trying to keep track of as much as i can um i've seen the comments too of oh well, we wish we could see you at work nah a there'd be copyrighted uh audio in the background and b i'm i'm not interactive i don't say anything i'm just writing on the board it's just frenetically writing on the board and trying to frantically get as many notes up there as i can and and not miss things but i do and i there are things that get missed so like uh, last night, Darlene sets a record. I'll talk about that. But I, I didn't hear it. I didn't see it. I don't watch uh, pregame. I don't watch postgame. I don't watch the intermissions. If there's an intermission show, then that means that there's another game going on somewhere else on a busy night. And if it's not busy and there's an intermission, well, then I, I leave the room and, and go, you know, talk to my wife or maybe have a bite to eat. And so I'm, I'm just basically focused on taking as many notes as I can and as soon as that last game finishes I'm right here I'm doing the review slash recap and and I go from there and then there yeah there's stuff that I I may not know until after although after the review uh nine times out of ten uh the tv's already off and I just go to bed so yeah it's an exciting life it's great but anyways, uh, yeah, so the how could you not mention 9 times out of 10, it's either something I didn't see. And if it's a controversial play, it's a controversial hit, there's times where I intentionally leave it out. Where I'll see, you know, people are really upset. Well, then I'm, I'm just leaving it out. I'm not. No, nope. we'll talk about it the next day. We'll see if Department of Player Safety says anything about it. Other than that, we'll wait. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Uh, news of the day for all you fine people, starting with Eric Stahl signs a one-year $750,000 contract. Uh, so the Florida Panthers brought in Mark Stahl. Now they bring in Eric Stahl. Eric Stahl is a good, solid depth forward, and I think uh, will help them out. Uh, Florida, of course, already had a lot of depth. Now they've got more. Uh, Brandon Montour returns tonight for them against the Tampa Bay Lightning. I think that's going to be... Uh, a good addition for them in that they're missing Ekblad. Of course, they traded Uyghur in the offseason. Uh, depth on the blue line isn't quite what it was for Florida a year ago, but I, I think they'll be fine. Uh, their record's pretty good, and with Montour back, that'll help. Uh, McCabe's been taken off the IR by the Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, that helps them out a little bit on the blue line. Of course, with Chicago, we're all asking, so when is the, the house cleaning going to start this season, and who could potentially be on the block, and why is it everybody? So yeah, McCabe comes back off IR. We'll see what that does to their defense pairings. Chicago off to a one and two start. They're against Detroit tonight. And yeah, we'll see how that one goes. Uh, Vancouver is frustrated. They're the only winless team left. I did the video on them this morning because it's video worthy. It'd be video worthy if it was any team for the record. It just happens that the Canucks usually early in the season are video worthy and not for good reasons. So there's that. And for, the, for those who ask, well, why wouldn't you talk about you know this team doing well? It's not nearly as interesting when a team's doing well as when things are falling apart. It just isn't. So the Canucks are always interesting. Anyways, they're the only winless team left in the league now, so they have to remedy that. The problem is Saturday's games against Buffalo, who are playing well right now, so we'll see how it goes. Last night against Buffalo, Milan Lucic plays his 1,100th game. That's right, 1,100 games for Lucic, which I think is remarkable. Now, I understand he gets paid a lot of money and his contract's expensive for the production he provides at this point, but when a guy who plays the style of hockey Lucic does goes over 1,000 games, much less 1,100, it is nothing short of remarkable to me. We've seen how power forwards' careers get cut short by the hockey they play. Lucic has found a way to stay healthy through most of it, and he is still, you know, an absolute beast out there. Not Jack Eye level, of course. Jack Eye uh, today, uh, I think he's probably walking a little bit taller after that fight against Cassian, 
which is not on the board, but I thought I'd throw that out there. But yeah, Lucic, uh, game 1100, kudos to him for that. Uh, once his career is done, of course, I would do a career video. I don't think his career is near done, though. I think Calgary's going to bring him back. I think next year they'll sign him. I think it'll probably probably be like million, million and a half. I'd be kind of surprised if they don't. He fits in. He, he's they're not Their expectations for him are lower than what they were in Edmonton. And I think he does really well for them. Uh, Toronto's lineup's going to look a little different tomorrow. Uh, Wayne Simmons draws into the lineup. He was, of course, called up. Uh, as soon as Matt Murray went on LTIR, which tells you Simmons getting cut at in part was because of salary cap reasons. Uh, so he makes his debut tomorrow. Obe Kubel, a healthy scratch. Uh, Nick Obe Kubel has been a healthy scratch in Philly, in Colorado, now in Toronto. Uh, and he's he's a good depth forward for that. I've, I've never heard of any complaints from him about wanting more ice time or complaining about being scratched. And there are players who will complain about being scratched. So... Uh, for Toronto, we'll see how things go. Of course, Sam, Samsonov with a very good start to the season. And uh, yeah, so for Toronto, things aren't necessarily as bad as it might have sounded a couple of days ago. Now, Buffalo. Uh, Darlene sets a record. Four-game goal-scoring streak to start the season as a defenseman. That is a new National Hockey League record. I don't know how far it goes. I wouldn't be surprised if he scores against Vancouver tomorrow. But for Darlene, he's had a very good start to the season after what was a solid year last year, too. So with Darlene and, and that blue line being better than expected, at least early in the season, they've got themselves in the conversation when it comes to, you know, maybe that surprise team. But as I've said, the Atlantic, I thought Buffalo would get better. Uh, I, I had Ottawa in the playoffs. And... Uh, I thought Detroit would be right up there too. So the Atlantic should be pretty competitive. And with the way Montreal's been playing, who knows? And again, some of these teams are going to fall off. Uh, early starts, fast starts. Ottawa, I think, had a fast start last year. It was either last year or the year before they had this this good start and then it fell apart for them. Now, Ottawa this year, 2-2 uh, two and two after starting 0-2. Jake Sanderson's getting x-rays, took a stick in the mouth. That sounds painful. I don't recommend it. So yeah, hopefully Sanderson's okay. And isn't going to be out that long, but if they're doing x-rays, uh, it, may, it may be a tough one. So, yeah, hopefully for Sanderson, it's not that bad. Uh, Jake Gensel not at practice, and it was revealed by Coach Mike Sullivan that he's he's dealing with an upper body injury related to uh, a Latang shot that he took in the ear. I don't recommend that either. Um, I, honestly, I, I, I'd recommend not getting hit by a puck Latang is shot at all. Uh, but the good news is Gensel's traveling with the team. Now, if that's by air, and I assume it's by air, um, if you've got an ear problem, you don't want to be traveling on a plane. So uh, that tells me it's probably not that bad, and it's probably precautionary that he wasn't at practice and they're getting him checked out just for precautionary reasons. So I, I wouldn't say there's any reason to panic. If they did lose Gensel for any period of time, that is tough because he's one of their better goal scorers. Uh, Devon Taves not playing tonight for Colorado. It's an undisclosed injury. Uh, so hopefully that one's not a long-term one either, but we shall see. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.